what some of the perils are of reloading if you're not careful. You reload for a, a couple at least. There might be more, but for me there is more. A couple of uh, reasons. One for me is that it's a very great pastime that uh, I've always loved to do. Ever since I was 12 years old, I've been reloading, casting bullets, and, and messing with firearms. Uh, during that time, I really didn't read a lot. I didn't have anybody to teach me how to reload, to talk to me about the things that were really important to do and not to do in reloading. And so I made some mistakes. Luckily, they weren't tragic mistakes. It cost me an eye or a finger or somebody to get hurt. But in a lot of times, um, that can happen. And so I wanted to talk to you about that. Um, I'm going to show you a pistol here. And anybody who's looking at this pistol can see that this is something wrong with that pistol. Would you agree? This pistol was one that I had given to my wife's uncle uh, about well, over 50 years ago, probably 52 years ago. And uh, he was a rancher and, and a, a, a really a great guy. And he wanted to have something to carry with him in the truck and, and whatever when he was on the ranch. And this is a 45 caliber. Not a 45 long Colt, a 45 Colt caliber Hawes pistol. In those days, uh, this was a pretty uh, good pistol. And so I gave it to him and I showed him how to reload some ammunition. And in reloading the ammunition, he would do it about once a year, maybe twice a year, load a couple boxes of ammunition that last him all year long. Uh, he really didn't understand a lot about reloading and so I taught him the basics. And over the next 35, 40 years, that's exactly what he did until this happened. Now, the reason this happened is that he had been given a can of powder that had no label. And when it had no label, he took the powder and put a little bit of the can that he had already had that I'd given him in one hand and a, a little bit of the, of the pan he found with no label on the other. And they looked it over and they... They looked the same, so we assumed they were the same. Sometimes assuming things can be disastrous. So we loaded a bunch of ammunition, took it out to the range, and he had grandkids on both sides of him. His very first shot did this to the pistol. So apparently it was not the same kind of powder as he thought he had originally. And luckily he walked away from that accident without... Um, losing an eye or a finger or having any of his grandkids killed, but absolutely it destroyed his pistol. I think it's beyond repair, wouldn't you agree? And uh, so there is one tragic accident. The next one I'm going to explain to you about is a good friend of mine. And uh, the good friend bought a pistol. I'm not sure exactly what kind of pistol he bought at my son's uh, gun store here in Elko. And uh, this guy really understands guns, too, and reloading and things like this. And so um, he bought this pistol, a 9 millimeter. He went home and he loaded a bunch of ammunition. He went to the rifle range. And again, he had children, grandchildren on both sides of him. His very first shot blew the whole pistol up. Not a scratch on anybody but the gun was destroyed and it was another accident that didn't turn out to be a tragic accident that cost either somebody eyes or fingers or a life. And uh, when I saw him in the gun store, he had come in to bring that gun in and show it to my son and I happened to be there. And uh, he told me what happened, that his powder measure had malfunctioned and when it malfunctioned, um, he says it threw the wrong load, probably a double load, and uh, that's what blew his pistol up. So he bought another pistol right then and there, the same as the one he just had, bought another pistol. That pistol was totally demolished, and there was no way that it could be warranted because of uh, the accident they had. And so he went home, and he reloaded now some good ammunition, put his grandkids in his pickup, went out to the shooting range, and he shot that pistol, and it shot fine, perfectly. 
But in the process of doing that, his grandkids had looked around on the ground. And this just happened to be the same spot where the previous gun had blown up. And they found pieces on the ground that they were picking up. And luckily for them, they found about four or five of the cartridges that previously had blown up, picked them up, and put them in the ashtray in his pickup on top of some of the cartridges that he had just loaded that worked fine. So he picked up some of those cartridges and put them in his magazine in his pistol and fired them and blew up another gun. And again, nobody was hurt. He walked away from it unscathed and he was, was okay, but he lost two guns. Now, the reason I'm telling you about that, those two accidents is this. When you're gonna reload, there are certain things that you really need to know what you're doing with. Most of them involve powder. Either when you go through the book, never assume that this powder is the same as this powder. If it's not in the book, don't use it. Use the powder that is recommended in the manual. The second thing is make sure that you've got the cartridge in the manual that you're going to load for. If it says 38 Special, that is not the same thing as 357 Magnum. It's not the same thing as 9mm, even though the bullets may look uh, pretty close to the same in weight and everything else. The bullets are, are even sometimes are a little bit different in diameter, but don't assume that you can cross and use them in something else. The other thing is, is that when you start to use the manual and there will be loads generally, a, a light load or the beginning load, the moderate load or the maximum load. Don't at the very first drop of the hat use the maximum load. Never go above the minimum load when you're starting. Generally speaking, try to stay close to the suggested load, the starting load. And finally, make sure that you have the right powder. Don't use cans of powder that somebody else has poured powder in it and marked it 2400 or 38, uh, uh, 4831 or anything else. Some of those powders can be um, devastating to your pistol, your rifle, your shotgun. And then finally, the last thing on safety on that issue is this. There's a whole bunch of manuals out there that you can get. Hornaday, Spear, RCBS, Sierra, Lyman, and a whole host of others that in the very beginning of the manual normally, it tells you how to reload, what to look for, what not to do, what to do, and follow the manual. What I'm going to be talking to you about today is the way that I do it, and I try to follow the manual in every way to make sure that I'm doing it safely. It was not always this way when I started reloading when I was 12 years old. As a 12 years old uh, person, I loved guns. I thought I knew enough about guns to know what I could do and should do and, and uh, to do it safely. But I didn't in all cases. And as we go through this, I'll be able to explain to you some of the things that I did that were wrong. And um, sometimes all it cost me was a misfire or a squib, or sometimes it cost me a bulge barrel in a gun, which happened too. And so I'm going to help you to to not make the same mistakes that I made and to do it safely. Because if you do it safely, reloading can be just as safe as driving your new Porsche or a new pickup or eating at the dinner table. But if you do it in a scatterbrained way, you can hurt yourself, you can kill others, and you can kill yourself.